What is up? It is time to bust out your metal markers and your chop saw because we are building another chassis. However, it is not for me. I had a nice guy contact me a couple months ago probably and he was curious if I had any interest in doing it. And although I had some projects going on at the time, we figured out a good timeline for him to basically drive four, four and a half hours my way. He brought his own tube and he brought some brand new seats. I decided I'd build all the mounts for his seats as well. So when he got here, he gave us a, a chance to talk in person about it. And the fact that I have a buggy that I built sitting here works out really well because then he can just sit inside of it. And it gives us a really good idea on what he wants in terms of dimensions. So we'll take a couple of the things he wants and then I'll kind of go from there. So I'm literally going to get my chop saw down, it's up on the shelf. I may get away with leaving that in here tonight. So that might be fine. I'm going to have to... We'll get this tube bender faced around the other way. When I'm not using it, I turn it towards the wall here to give myself more room, but it is time to use that thing. It's not light. That's how you know it's good quality. Just kidding. And what I like to do is have two pieces of wood that are the exact same height as my chop saw. And then I can slide them way down there and keep this tube level while I'm cutting it. Because I'm by myself and we're dealing with 23 foot long pieces. I think they're the longest pieces I've dealt with. Uh, it seems like normally I get 21s, a lot of 20s and 21 footers, but these were 23 is what I was told and they, they look very long. I clamp it down tight right there but that wood will keep it nice and plumb. And there's so much extra length for the lower frame rail from here to the end. I also set up a little area for the tube to fall down gently, uh, cause I don't want this to just drop a hundred miles to the ground. And another random setup I have going on here. Ridiculous, right? I've used the cherry picker before. You guys may remember that. But, uh, I don't know, actually I think I like this better. So, once again, this really long piece, there's so much left over that it kind of needs to be supported. After I do a couple pulls on the bender here, it'll get itself in a bind and it'll hold itself up. But before that initial pull on the bender, it's pretty just, it's just loose over here. So I like to prop it up, get it level, and uh, go from there. chassis basically done all right we can move on to the next thing I hate building those. what is up we are back at it I've made a little progress since the last clip I'll show you guys what's up well there it is we got the rails connected that takes some time obviously it's super important process trying to get that as true as can be and then I got my first frame rail spreader done here nice fit the guy I'm building this chassis for prefers to have the double stinger front end, kind of the two points up front. So it's, I mean, that's always a tough look. We'll see, we'll see how much further I get beyond that. That'd be awesome to start moving on to the rockers as well. So I think we're gonna open up those shop doors, back the red buggy out of the shop, give it some sun, you know, and then turn on the tunes. Get this welder out of the way temporarily while we move the buggy. I'll tell you what, when I was burning in those belly bars to connect that lower rail. This welder was running right. Mm. 
What should we do first? Doesn't really matter. I've been feeling I've been feeling some old slip now lately. Weird. You don't have to go home, but you cannot stay here, dude. You gotta go outside. I might clean up some of that tube and fully weld some of those copes and move on to the front, I guess. I decided to start working on the belly bars here. Uh, I'll put two more in as well. All right, we're planning ahead here. So where I splice the front of the chassis on, in case he wants to run coolant through the chassis rails, I'm cutting out these weird little pucks here that I'll weld in there to keep the coolant from going where it's not supposed to go. And that's what it looks like on the inside. But that'll never be seen again. <laughs> Maddie, are we going to Branson? Yeah. All right. Yes, we are headed to Branson. We go every November. Super hokey, and we love it. I had to show you guys my wife's plant. Yeah, I'll be Wow. Why would you do that? It looks good. <laughs> Have you guys heard of the floating jellyfish? No. All you gotta do is not take care of it and leave it outside in the freezing rain. Can you insert a picture of it looking great? Do we have a picture of it looking great? Yeah. <laughs> we made it, we made it. Boom. We are on a mission to find who? Kong. King Kong. And a skull crawler. And a skull, and a skull crawler. <laughs> Found the Titanic. Like the Titanic. We're taking this journey on by oh, foot. There it is. We have just wrapped up giving the belly of the beast some lateral reinforcement here. Now it's time for me to cut out all of the uh, spreaders that go from your top frame rail to your rocker. We are moving along here. We've still got some fuel in here, that's good. Gonna need a lot more. <laughs> Did you ever think it would be such a workout being in the shop? Burning a lot of calories in here. You got us and that's all you need. You don't care. Long piece of tube there. Well, you came down here. Well, I just came down here. And the biggest coat you got when it's 78 degrees outside. What's up, dude? <laughs> I got the Megalodon. The Megalodon monster truck? Yeah. That's awesome, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Amanda's coat's blocking all the acreage out here. <laughs> For the first time ever, I am going to attempt to have the wife try to bend a piece of tube. So typically the bends start off kind of easy. It's when you keep getting steeper and steeper on your angle that it gets tougher and tougher. And I need a pretty good angle on this. I suspect the first couple bends she can do, but it's gonna put some strain on her muscles and she'll see what I deal with every day. All right. Let it rip. Let it rip. You think I can do this? I don't know, you're on like the easiest form of bend right now. Oh. You made it look so easy. Okay, well, wait, I think it's gone. Oh, fudge. <laughs> no way. Wait, wait. No. Just come on. Let's wrap it up. No, I can't. Because not one bit. <laughs> no. <laughs> wait, let me try one. <laughs> No, no, wait. I'm getting all right, 
Angela? Let me see your form. Okay. <laughs> You're set up for the next one. <laughs> hey, hey. What? <laughs> Leverage. Oh, okay. Say go mom. Go mom. Oh, Lordy. <laughs> How embarrassing. Wait, wait, wait. It's going. Make sure you're not hanging down. Wait, it's going. No, like, it's not pull, going. Pull parallel off the ground. Don't like pull down. So the camera actually died, and <laughs> I was able to get a perfect 90 degree bend. All right, let's give uh, an update here. There's the chassis, we're making some progress. And happy Thanksgiving, although this might be posted on uh, 4th of July, I don't know. But it is Thanksgiving day here. I think we're gonna move to the eyebrow area now, and roof from there, all that fun stuff. Alright, I feel like I've done a lot of work since the last time I filmed anything on this, but I only have two. Two short pieces of tube left on this chassis right here. Um, and then we're moving to seat mounts. up the day. The chassis itself is fully welded out, completely done. On the seat mounts I'm only halfway done though. So uh, it's, each seat is bolted in with two bolts at the moment. So I will have to wrap that up. Uh, I thought I'd toss some tires next to it. 